Hello, and welcome back to the GCP Mindset Channel. We're diving into an increasingly important topic in the world of clinical trials, remote audits. As more of the clinical research landscape moves to virtual formats, knowing how to prepare efficiently for a remote audit can make the process much smoother. Whether you're a seasoned professional or preparing for your first audit, this guide will help you stay on track. Welcome to the GCP Mindset channel and all topics on clinical research. Let us start with understanding the basics of remote audits. Remote audits are essentially systematic and independent examinations conducted virtually to ensure compliance with good clinical practice, national regulations, and your organization's standard operating procedures. The purpose of a remote audit is no different from that of an on-site audit, but it presents unique logistical challenges. Instead of an auditor being physically present, everything is done via technology. This means that both the auditor and the auditee need to ensure they have the right technical setup, including working laptops, webcams, and a stable internet connection. It's important to verify that all these systems are functioning well before the audit begins. Next, let's move on to the steps for efficient preparation. The foundation of any successful audit is in the planning. Begin by setting up the required infrastructure. This includes ensuring that everyone involved in the audit process has access to the necessary hardware and software. Not only that, but all parties should also be comfortable using the technology for video conferencing and document sharing. It's also crucial to develop a clear audit plan. Both the auditor and the auditee should agree on the objectives, timeline, and the documents required for review. This ensures both sides are aligned and that there are no surprises. Now, let's talk about establishing a dedicated audit team. A well-organized team can make all the difference during the audit. Your audit team should include representatives from key areas such as quality assurance, clinical trial teams, IT, and legal departments. It's essential to assign specific roles to each team member, such as who will manage the flow of documentation or who will be the primary point of contact for the auditor. In addition, it's helpful to conduct mock audits and interview training. This can help staff feel more comfortable with the audit process and ensure that they are well prepared to answer questions confidently. Let's dive into document preparation. Remote audits rely heavily on the review of documentation, so you need to make sure all requested documents are readily accessible via secure platforms. It's also important to be clear about the timeline for providing documentation. You don't want to be scrambling at the last minute, so having everything organized ahead of time will help the audit go more smoothly. Be sure to have backup plans in place for any potential technical issues, such as unstable internet connections. Always have a backup communication method, like phone lines, ready to ensure that the audit can continue if technology fails. When it comes to the actual conduct of the audit, communication is key. The audit typically starts with an opening meeting, during which the participants introduce themselves and review the agenda. This is a great opportunity to provide the auditor with an overview of your organization, including your processes and the specific clinical trials involved. Virtual facility tours and interviews with key staff members are often part of the remote audit process. Make sure your team is well prepared to provide clear, concise answers to any questions the auditor may have. Remember to stick to answering the specific questions you're asked and avoid speculating or offering unverified information. Let's discuss risk management and contingency planning. Remote audits are not without their risks. For instance, technical issues like a dropped internet connection can disrupt the process. This is why having a contingency plan in place is essential. Ensure you've established a backup method for communication, such as switching to a phone call if the video conferencing platform fails. Data security is another critical consideration. Be sure to mute microphones and turn off cameras during audit breaks to maintain confidentiality and privacy. It's also important to ask for permission in advance if you need to record any part of the audit. After the audit is completed, the follow-up process begins. The auditor will provide a report that summarizes their findings, including any observations of non-compliance. These findings are typically categorized as critical, major, or minor. It's then up to you to address these observations through corrective and preventive actions, also known as CAPA, 
promptly respond to the auditor's recommendations, and ensure that your corrective actions are thorough and well-documented. The goal here is to resolve any issues and prevent future non-compliance. To wrap things up, let's summarize the key points for efficiently preparing for a remote audit. First and foremost, focus on the preparation phase. This includes setting up the necessary technology, organizing your documents, and ensuring that your team is ready. Secondly, cooperation with all parties involved is crucial to maintaining a smooth audit process. Finally, clear communication throughout the audit will help avoid misunderstandings and ensure that the auditor can complete their review effectively. Remote audits are becoming more common, and while they come with their own challenges, they can be successfully managed with proper planning and preparation. So, make sure to follow these steps to ensure your next remote audit is a success. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. If you're preparing for a remote audit, I hope you found these tips helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights into clinical trials and how to navigate them efficiently. If you have any experience with remote audits in clinical research, we would like to hear from you in the comments. Until next time, take care.